Guys, we are live. Y'all see us. We're here at Easton Park doing our live stream like we always do. And let me just remove this so y'all can see us a little bit better. Right. Ah. <laughs> so anyways, guys, we are the neighborhood specialists here at Easton Park, where we bring you monthly live streams and we bring you valuable content that I think could help our neighborhood. Uh, we live, work, and play here. So we'll start with formal introductions. And Araceli, I don't know if you want to go first and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Araceli Frazier. Um, and um, if you watch us, you know, we've lived in the neighborhood for a lot of years. Um, kind of jump around, do the, the Easton Park Shuffle. But I just get excited to to uh, be part of the live stream and to bring you um, relevant content. So yay, girl. Good job. Uh, and Gabby, go ahead. All right. I'm Gabby. Um, I'm in the Kiki Park area so up and coming we just had our little potluck picnic our first one a couple weeks ago it was a big success um and like liza said our our goal with this is to uh, you know be useful for our neighbors there's a lot of stuff that uh whenever we find out about it we're like oh that's really good to know we should make sure our people know this and so this is our way to put it out um and that being said i just want to encourage y'all we've gotten some really good questions over time so if ever you're like, hey, I kind of want to know about this thing, reach out and let us know because we can do a little spotlight on it the next week or the next month. Um, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Gabby. And guys, I'm Liza Brazel. I have also done the shuffle around here in Easton Park, like Araceli. And I am so happy to be living here. I think we do live in a very great community where neighbors support each other. We have a lot of local businesses. So I absolutely love living here. Um, and I'm born and raised here in Austin. So I used to live in Montopolis and kind of moved around the city and settled here in Easton Park. Um, I had gypsy feet for the longest time. I wouldn't stay there for longer than a year. And here's the longest where I've stayed in Easton Park. So that has to say something. Um, and for us to be realtors discussing this. Uh, but uh, enough about that. We will be discussing our resident highlight. We will also be talking about uh, protesting your taxes and what's coming up in Easton Park, and we'll end it with market stats. Uh, so let's introduce Let our, for, our Oh, yeah, go ahead. One second. Um, Because one of the neighbors just asked where they can join. And I know we usually post a, a thing. Yeah. Like, you just so, had surgery. Yeah, uh, I just posted on Facebook, both in, okay. in the Easton Park homeowners and also in the Easton Park real estate neighborhood news, the okay. link to the YouTube, uh, our YouTube channel, our YouTube live channel. So they Perfect. can go ahead and join in. But I will be bringing up our resident highlight. And Adaseli, if you could please do the honor of introducing our resident highlight. Well, this is Nancy. Her and her partner are the owners. Right the <laughs> We're so excited to have a coffee, a coffee truck. I was, I was telling Nancy this, you know, I have friends that live in Zoker and I was like, oh my God, we're getting a coffee truck. And he's like, cool. <laughs> like, for us. It's so, a big deal over here. <laughs> it's a big sure. deal. So yeah. Anything that comes up around here. It's just like, we're, we're looking for fun things to do and quality food yeah. and drink to have. So yeah. I've been hearing a lot of hype about y'all's coffee. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for inviting me on. Um, a little bit about me. Um, so my name is Nancy Aguirre. I am an Eastern Park resident, so I do live over in Skyline, uh, Skyline Park. Um, have lived here kind of closed in May 2020, so it's been about three years. Okay. Um, but my partner and I, my partner Harrison Cook, um, a few months after we closed in May 2020, uh, we were told that um, he was being let go. So we actually ended up finding a job opportunity and moved to Georgia for a year and a half. <laughs> yeah, long story, but um, moved to Georgia. Um, always wanted to come back to Austin. So uh, we rented our house in Easton Park. It was such a great community. We rented our house to yeah. two yeah. good friends. Yeah. Um, with the intention of, you know, we'll be back. Um, and we did make our move back about a year ago. Um, so we're happy to be back in Austin, happy to be back in Easton Park. It's such a good community. Um, and yeah, I guess in January, um, so about five months ago, we had talked about the idea of starting a coffee business for a few years now, um, my partner Harrison, he's from the Seattle area. So coffee is, you know, a huge thing up there. Being here, uh, yes. Yeah, it's big. <laughs> so it's always been a thought. Um, but like I said, whenever we moved to Georgia and moved back, 
there was a lot of growth in Easton Park, right? A lot of new homes being built. I mean, it, even in just the year and a half that we were gone, we came back and we're like, whoa, like the amount of houses that have gone up in parks, which is all really nice. And, you know, there's there's value there, but we were still like, we still don't have any coffee over here. <laughs> so, um, no, we don't. We're like, so, and it's not that it's a horrible commute. It's just, it does feel like it's far away to get to somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like yeah. how so many people start the day and it's like, you don't want to have to drive like 10, 15 minutes to get it. It's one of the building blocks of life for a lot of us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's such like an integral part of, I can, I'm going to say like a lot of people's routine yeah. and something that they enjoy. And, um, you know, we had a lot of uh, coffee places that we love and, but again, would drive, you know, 15 or 20 minutes out to get, you know, specialty um, coffee somewhere. Um, so yeah, we just thought, you know, it's been at that time, like two and a half years here in Easton Park. Um, we've thought about it for years now and let's just do it. So in January, we were like, let's, let's start the, the coffee trailer. Um, and the little food trip lot on Colton Bluff, I, I don't think it was, at least I don't remember it being there whenever we were, we first moved in. Um, but once we came back and noticed like, oh, there's barbecue, um, blind man barbecue, Taqueria Monarca, we were like, that's a good spot. And it's right around the corner and it'd be, you know, something really close by or practically in Easton Park. So yeah. a lot of us, I think would, would enjoy it. So, um, yeah, we started that journey of starting up the coffee business and it's been a crazy, um, what now, like five, four ish, five months, yeah. but um, yeah, it, we've met a lot of great people who have helped us ramp up. Um, Harrison and I have, you know, it's important for us to be um, just very transparent because a lot of the people, a lot of our, you know, customer base are our neighbors, which is really yes. nice and um, so nice to get to meet everyone. And we tell everyone our story of um, we're first time baristas, first time entrepreneurs. So we have never done anything like this before. Yeah, so. <laughs> I, I like that you, you yet your passions led you it led you where you yeah. are awesome so, yeah. yeah and um nancy what is what does ceniso mean where did the name come from yeah great question so ceniso so we knew um a little backstory is we actually started off as paradox austin um our name was going to be paradox um and you'll see, like, if you scroll back in our Instagram, we had, like, our old Paradox logo, old name, but. Are you there, Nancy? Our lawyer who was helping us ramp up the business and um, let us know that Paradox was actually already trademarked. Um, and then I think the day after, we also got, uh, we ended up getting a message from someone that they were also a Paradox starting up in South South Austin. What? Um, yeah, so it was just the, like it was just an interesting timing, and we were like, okay, let's let's go back to the drawing board. Um, and when we when we did that, it was important for us to have a name that was reflective of you know our state of Texas and Austin, because uh, part of our mission and what's really important to us is just really supporting the community. Um, going back to you know wanting to bring that coffee experience to Easton Park. Um, so we wanted it to be something that was reflective of Austin and Texas. And I, I just was just looking at like, what are Texas native plants was my, um, my little Google search that I did. And I found Texas sage, like, you know, the number one um, result that comes up is also known as Cenizo. So we liked the sound of it and we were like, oh, that's, you know, it was, it was uh, something that really right away clicked. And we also found out that it's also a type of agave so um, that also worked out because we thought that's pretty reflective of like, you know, next our, yeah, what was that? Tequila's next at the coffee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, oh my stay, God. Tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. Um, so um, with that, we were like, we think it's a great fit and we like the sound of it and um, we went with it. So it's Ceniso um, and that's why you'll see on our branding um, an illustration of the, the Texas sage, the plant, and then also the agave. So it ties back in there. Um, and our, uh, our branding was done by a local designer in Austin. Her name is Meg Burke. So again, just really important for us to support local. Can you say um, that again? Meg? Meg Burke. 
Yeah. Meg Burke. Meg Burke. Yeah. She's awesome. a local Austin designer and, and she knocked it out of the park. She, you know, took our vision. Here's what it means. And, uh, you know, surpassed like totally or totally surpassed our expectations. So it was awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that is that. fantastic. And I love that y'all dove into like what's native here and yeah. And I think it was very important for us at the time because we had moved recently back from Georgia. So it's one of those things where I was born and raised in Texas. So Georgia was my first move out of state. And something about when you leave your home state, you, I never really, <laughs> it sounds bad. I never really considered myself like um, too prideful of Texas. You know, uh, there's yeah. like this yeah. kind of yeah. a, like stereotype yeah. of uh, <laughs> Texans. And then something about when you move away from your home state, it makes you more prideful. <laughs> <laughs> about it it does like you want to tell people where you're from and like your background and your story so um so yeah at the time like that's why there was no question like that's something that's like reflective of texas um and our community here so it all worked out it's so, awesome. Nancy, what's your background previous to yes. your entrepreneurship yeah so uh, my background was actually in uh inside sales so i was at dell technologies for almost seven years prior to starting Senisal, um, mm -hmm. and made the jump in the first week of April to do Senisal full time. So I left, I left my position at Dell and it was, it was a great experience, great people, great culture, um, and dove into Senisal full time since then. So if you guys stop by the truck, I'll almost more than likely be there <laughs> most days. <laughs> Yeah, so Good. excited. Very exciting jump, but um, very um, happy to just be in this new chapter. Yeah, and it sounds like you had a successful opening, too, with live music. And I I must have missed it. When did you have the um, opening? I think my connection is spotty. Oh, whoops. Can you hear us okay? What was that? I think my connection dropped for oh, a second. Okay. Um, I think I left off where you had a really good opening, right? Yeah. Yeah. The grand opening was. And was, tell us what it entailed. Yeah. Um, the grand opening was this past Saturday. Okay. Um, so for the entire month of April, we were pretty much soft open, um, open certain weekdays, most weekends, but schedule was a little sporadic as yeah. we were transitioning and learning, you know, parts of what. Um, the daily operation would be. So it was a, a great period for us to learn and really hone in on, you know, what the day to day would look like, all our recipes, um, processes. So it served a great purpose. And we're very thankful for even all the people that visited us while we were soft open. Um, but finally, this past weekend, we had our grand opening. Um, and we really wanted to make it something special and uh, involve mm -hmm. our community. So we, um, you know, asked some of our neighbors, if anyone was interested in setting up a little pop-up event there. So we had a few local businesses from other Easton Park residents there. Um, so that was really special. Uh, we also had music by Dusty Miller, also an Easton Park resident. So I love, see, I love that. I already love what you're doing. Like, that's awesome. Like, hey, hey, neighbors, let's get together. <laughs> Let's just yeah. go together. That's so cool. I love that. Yeah. I love hearing yeah. that. So we were very fortunate that we had, you know, as great of a turnout as we did. Um, it was a great, great day for us. And everyone was super excited and, and really supportive, which is really nice. And, um, you know, people telling us congratulations and we're so happy you're here. And I will say what we hear all the time is this was much needed. And then oh, we tell, and absolutely. then you know, we tell them like, I know we live here. I know. Yes. Like, and they took our coffee machine away at the amenity center. So. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. even for reason to, to visit you, Nancy, right? Yeah, <laughs> totally. We're there, so yeah, we'd love to have to have everyone, and it's great just getting to meet all of the neighbors. Um, Harrison and I joke that we've met more neighbors in the last now three, four weeks. Than we have in the going on three years. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. That's crazy. That's that's what I was telling. Like when we um, so out of selling Gabby and I, we started kind of getting this idea. Let's do these live streams. Let's do these events. And I feel that mm -hmm. I've gotten out of my, well, more of an um, is, is I don't even know if this is the word. Is it ambivert? 
Am I saying that right? Yeah. Where it's both extrovert and introvert. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's so odd and so weird. Like, I'm not one to like connect and just randomly talk to people. But I told Arasa and Gabby, I was like, what if we did these events and we get to know more of our neighbors? For me, that would be a warm intro to neighbors because I can't just come up to someone like, hey, my name's Liza. That, that's so awkward of me to do that. <laughs> right. Yeah. We all but, want to give something, like provide yeah. something as, yeah. or, you know. And didn't y'all also have um, Melissa's daughter? Uh, selling art there. Oh my god! Yeah, we did. Yeah. Um, yeah, Con like Contessa. Me. I should say her name yes. too. Contessa. I saw y'all made the way that you did it. I just want to commend you for that because y'all really managed to bring a ton of neighbors out and a heart heartwarming way. People were so happy. Like the ones who were there to buy stuff, the ones who were there to sell stuff. Everyone yeah. felt so like treasured. It was it was really cool to see. I saw a lot of posts from different people basically just being like, wow, this was something my heart needed and I didn't realize. So yeah. I really want to commend you guys for that because that's something that you only achieve if you're that thoughtful as you guys have been. Oh, we appreciate that. And that means so much because um, I go back to us being, you know, first time entrepreneurs. So it's our first time coordinating that. But I think just tying everything back to like the reason we wanted to create this in the first place is just it being a neighborhood spot, a place for the community. So like every decision we've made has just been to really incorporate as many community members as we can. So, I mean, we were just honored that we had that many people that wanted to be a part of our special day and like wanted to set up um, and spend their weekend with us too, because it was, yeah, it was, you know, it wasn't just, it wasn't an easy ask. So the fact that we had so many, um, so much interest and people that were a part of it, it's just, you know, we were, we were blown away by the support. And awesome. yeah, I think, I think everyone had a good time. So it was awesome for everyone. And we're just so happy. I'm curious. And I don't know if you want to share this, but I'm curious, how many cups of coffee did you sell on your grand opening? Oh man, it was close to 300. Okay, which, that's awesome. Yeah, it was. Yeah, wow. it was, it was busy. Yeah, that's, that's but really I mean, really exciting. yeah, again, just blown away by the support and the turnout and um, the fact that we had, you know, Easton Park residents for sure, but also people from Kyle, Buda, or other parts of Austin. That was I mean, going to be my next question. Like, if you're if you're getting also people from outside the neighborhood. Yes, we I, are. I, so yeah. it's yeah, it's been great. I mean, we're meeting so many people, and it's it's been awesome. Like, I just I, we can't express enough how thankful we are that we've received so much support already, um, and you know, are just so happy with with the experience and everything. I mean. I don't think we could have asked for a better grand opening and um, experience so far. We're still, you know, just a couple months in business or, you know, Y'all are offering something so special to the community that I, I, I have to keep going back to that because this is not something that just happens. You guys really yeah. did take the time to get to know what your community needed. And from everything I've heard, the coffee is fantastic. And then the atmosphere was super good. Enough that a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, I hope we have more events like this. Yeah. And what kind of hope? What, what do y'all serve? Um, what what would be your menu? Just because I, I again, I still have to try yeah. the coffee out and out of, like, coffee out of Sally yeah. to try it out. But let me know, what, what, do you, what do you serve for the people that do not know? I'm sure I'm not the only one, right? Yeah, <laughs> yes, very important question. Um, so we'll serve more traditional coffee drinks. So we have our drip coffee, our cold mm -hmm. brew, espresso. So lattes, Americanos, cortados, macchiatos. Mm -hmm. um, we have some house-made syrups that we make that we can, mm -hmm. you know, spice up your drink with. And yeah, um, yeah can, make, can make those drinks and... We also have Italian sodas and pastries that we source from Texas French bread. So also, oh, okay. also an Austin business. So yeah, we'd love to have them visit. And, you know. On the uh, ice torchata? I have the ice torchata, that. that's right. How could what? I do that? Yeah. No, I was like, I'm- That is important. Yeah. Is, is that, wait, do you order that, Araceli? 
I haven't, but okay. I, I want it because Oliver loves horchata. And mm. I was like, oh, that's got espresso. I probably shouldn't give that to him. No. <laughs> but, um, I, I really want to try it. I love horchata. So I'm excited about that. I'm just kind of like yeah. so boring. I just like a hot cup of coffee, even on a hot day. You Me know? Too. Yeah. Me too. It's a classic. You can't go wrong, too. It's yeah. just, you know, a good cup oh. of coffee. To that point, Araceli, do y'all have decaf options? We do. Yeah, you? we have a okay. decaf bean, so we can make you like a decaf latte or a decaf Americano, mocha, forgot to mention a mocha. Um, but yeah, so we have a little something for everyone, which was, you know, our intention when planning out the menu. Awesome. I love that. I'm told, I don't know when I'll make it out there. Araceli, we'll have to get together or Gabby too. We walk down there, get some coffee. And yeah. yeah, I'm excited to try out your place. I always see it when I drive by and I'm like, I need to try that place. I need to try that place. <laughs> so yeah. I'm excited. Well, about now that. after our grand opening, um, we're open daily. So yeah, visit us any day from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. is yeah. our schedule. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. I love that. Any last thoughts, guys? No. I, I just think it would be awesome if y'all ever start noticing you've got some a little bit of either extra bandwidth or you want to have another one of those events, reach out to us and maybe we can just kind of like help gather our our neighbors for like a little picnic or something, you know, just something to yeah. take everybody out there. Because I think that was, from everything I've heard, that was heartwarming for a lot of people. So I would love to awesome. see that happening more. And if we can help, just let us know. Ooh, Definitely, yes. yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys inviting me on and, um, you know, giving me a little bit of time to talk about our story and our business and what we hope to to do for the community. So I'm very thankful. Can I say one more last thing, Nancy? Yeah. I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm listening to you and I just had this vision of like five years down the road and like us being able to go come back to this video in this moment and see the excitement in your face and you know how great your your first week has been and i'm i'm just really excited for you and harrison so um kudos to you and i, I really yeah. had this vision like it was just like oh my god in five years maybe they'll have a brick and mortar and they have multiple locations and then we'll come back to this youtube and <laughs> this, how, how much this, this you know? live stream will live in you on youtube forever and ever and ever like it's yeah. no it's not gonna go away so you can always reference it back you're like oh honey look at us five years ago no. <laughs> <laughs> we're like an empire yeah. now no. <laughs> It's yeah, so that's so cool for sure. And it's going to, yeah, it's going to be a cool experience to look back. And um, yeah, very thankful that you guys invited me on. I was nervous to come on, honestly. <laughs> no, a Hopefully lot of it wasn't are. too bad. It's no, 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 no. <laughs> you guys are great. Feel like, uh, it's yeah. everything's like there's nothing scripted. It's all unscripted, organic conversations. Yeah. Because we genuinely want to know more about you. And I, I, I feel that maybe the neighborhood as well, want, they genuinely want to know people here so we can connect more and have that neighborly feel like an authentic um, yeah. connection exactly. over who we are more than just what we do exactly so many people are doing great things and I, I really it makes me want to be a part of that too so uh yeah I'm looking forward to supporting you and enjoying your wonderful coffee soon hopefully this week I'll go out there for a walk and totally. uh, yeah be oh, great to have you guys just, just to throw it out there for our lovely viewers we had mentioned that the uh our viewers can go and mention the live stream, right? And get a dollar off of their coffee. The first yes. 20 to do first it. 20. So y'all go out there, enjoy, take advantage of that. And just do your little I drum know. roll. Do your drum roll. <laughs> again. Drum roll. I should have done that again. before. <laughs> There you go. No, no, no. No, guys. No. <laughs> no, but really, thank you again, Nancy. Yeah, it's thank awesome you, talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Us. Um, we will, I know you have a busy day with everything, so we will go ahead and let you go here. And guys, if you uh, want to visit again, Nancy at Seniso, right? Seniso, did I yes, say that right? You got it. Yep. PM to 2 p.m. Is this Monday through Friday or every day? Every day. Every day. 6 a.m. Woo, that's early. 6 a.m. But yeah, yeah. get the coffee on. She closes at 2. So other than that, thank you so much, Nancy. Thank, thank you all. You guys have a good one. You have a good one. Oh, oh that was oh, great. That was. I love, I love that. All right. Let me finish this. And then, guys, we are going to jump into... 
I believe Miss Araceli had uh, something to talk about upcoming events. Uh, Araceli, you ready for that? Yeah, yeah, we can do that. So, uh, so this is what's what's going on in May. Um, I, we one thing that I keep leaving out is because you know our live stream is the second Thursday, yeah. so we missed those first few days, but. Um, I do want to mention the the Friday, the first Friday food truck. That's something that I wanted to kind of put in people's heads. So we missed that, but next month, first Friday food truck. It's different food truck every single month. So go out there and, and try different things. But right um, for the remaining time of the month, uh, tomorrow is a sweet treat social. Um, it is at Bumblebee Park, and honestly, I don't know where Bumblebee Park is. We have so many parks. Do, do you know where Bumblebee Park is? No. It's at Bumblebee Park in Prospect. So, oh, so Prospect oh. Park is. Um, so that's this new one over Yeah, that's the new one by Gabby, I think. Yeah. Right yeah. Over by Kiki um, Mountain. What's yes. essentially a, Kiki Mountain, yes. <laughs> the Dirt Mound by Kiki. Eventually it'll be a park, but for now. Yeah. The dirt mound. <laughs> so um, I believe that, that we're, or Eastern Park's doing this every single month, this Sweet Treat Social. So it's a great opportunity to bring the kids out. You make a little dessert. Um, I think it's chocolate brownie something or other this this month. So Bumblebee Park and Prospect Park. Um, I don't know if it's the same thing, but you know you know what I'm getting at. Um, also tomorrow night, we're going to have movies at the East, in the East at the Union. The movie has not been um, announced yet, but it's just a great opportunity to go outside and hang out with your neighbors and, you know, bring the kids out. Um, this Sunday is Mother's Day, so there is a Mother's Day brunch that is going to be at the Castillo. Um, all, all of these things are at the Union, but if you don't know the Castillo, the Vaughn, whatever, just go just go to the front. They'll, they'll um, point you in the right direction. But that is something that you want to RSVP too. So Mother's Day brunch. Um, next Friday, we have the Savory Farmers Market, which I think it's kind of the same, some of the same people that were at um, the grand opening. So a lot of just local vendors and um, farmers market mm -hmm. people. Um, I did add this, this Saturday, the 20th, the 55 and older uh, socialites because I I didn't know that we had one of those groups. So that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Gonna, I love I'm that. So my father-in-law, like, go out there. Maybe you'll meet a, a hot single fifty-five. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a dating thing, though. But you never know. You yeah. never know. That's Open so up where you'll find love. Yes. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so Sunday will be the Easton Park Craft Club that is led by Martha. So she's fantastic. I. I don't know the details of what the craft is this month, but you can follow the group on Facebook. And mm -hmm. I, I believe they do different crafts every single month. Okay. And then up right up Gabby's Alley, which is the Easton Park Tabletop Gamers. Um, so board games, uh, that is going to be Friday. Again, it's at the Union. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's, have you been to that, Gabby? Yeah, no, it's super fun. There's usually a few different games going on, you know, something for, for everybody. Um, when I went, there were also snacks and stuff that a lot of us brought. Uh, we took margaritas because it just felt appropriate. Yes, uh, but there's usually, like, there will be a bunch of different tables, and uh, it's a it's a great way to meet your neighbors and to also kind of just bond over something that's a little bit, you know, it's it's a no-pressure, like, just a laid back environment. Nobody's really stressing over the games. What but... kind of game? I mean, I know it's board games. So are we like talking like Yahtzee or like Dungeons and Dragons? Isn't that a board game too? Or Dungeons and Dragons is a much more uh, intricate. It's, it's, yes, it's much more intricate. And I cannot pretend to know about it. I really want to learn, but I've never played it. We had a lot more. Um, I think we had a Catan. We had a Carcassonne. Um, we had a ticket to ride. Um, I think there might have been somebody playing. Uh, what was it? It's not the game of life, but it's one of those, you know, so there were a bunch of games to pick from. And it's essentially just like, okay, it's each one of these can accommodate a certain number of people. So depending on how many people are there when the game is starting, um, they kind of narrow it down to that. 
adults. No huh? kids. It's, it's just adults. Or uh, it, yeah, it was just adults when I was there. I, I don't know if it's like a no kids, like a rule no kids. I think it's more just um, it's a little bit later in the night. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, kind of implied, you know, with the timing and everything that it's probably no kids like it's just. Yeah. 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 But I, I mean, I don't think any, I don't think anyone would necessarily have an issue with a kid. It's just, that's, that's right around bedtime kind of yeah. stuff. We were there until probably 10 o'clock. We just get to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so we can play Monopoly. <laughs> yeah. Let's make money. No. Monopoly money, yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. You guys are funny. So yes, those are the events for the month. Um, I encourage you to go out and, you know, meet your neighbors. There's so many other things that are going on to randomly. I know there's a poker night, um, which if you want any details on that, just find the, the Facebook group, but they've been having a great turnout at the poker night. So I know some of my friends and our neighbors that they, they really enjoy the poker night. So nice. that's all I have. Um, but yeah, hoping to see y'all out there. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Araceli, for that, for putting this together and discussing what we have going on for events in May. And like she mentioned earlier, uh, we do our live streams every second Thursday, so we might miss a little bit of uh, the beginning of May. But we have these other events that you can go to, and it, there's going to be more every month. So um, I am going to go on to the next stage of our slide, not the stats, but Gabby, are you prepared for the property uh, protest on the tax? Yeah. For sure, we can uh, we can jump into that if you want to do that before the yeah. end. Okay, so whew, everybody, get ready. It is that time of year. Uh, yeah. Deadline to file your intent to protest is this Monday, May fifteenth. Um, and we have some just some little fun facts. We'll post it in the Easton Park neighborhood real estate news. Um, but the the this kind of covers some of the highlights, which is essentially if you haven't gotten the notice, if anything happened and you haven't gotten it in the mail. You can check online at www.traviscad.org. Travis uh, just do a little property search and it should pull up whatever they have for you. Uh, if you are wondering, should I really protest? What if I have a homestead exemption? Then I'm capped. Most likely you should protest anyway because every little bit helps. Um, and a lot of us have had our properties overvalued. So it helps everyone. Um, and it also helps you in the future because, you know, if things keep going up the way they are, your homestead caps it at 10% increase every year, but it's going to go up that 10%. So you might as well keep it as low as you can. We have uh, a question from Jonathan. Yes. Thoughts on using a company like Five Stone to protest. The process seems overwhelming to do on your own. That's super valid. There are quite a few different companies that offer that. Thank you for that question, by the way, Jonathan. Um, and Five Stone is one that I've heard some good stuff about. So I wouldn't say I have anything against it. But my goal with this is to make it less daunting for y'all to take it on on your own, because it is very, very possible. And you actually, you know, we have the we have the information that we need. Um, and if you don't have it in hand, we can help you get it really, really easily. So it's not something that you necessarily need to because um, Five Stone, they they do a great job for a lot of people, but there's no guarantees and they are paid in a portion of your savings. Um, so, you know, it kind of depends on if you have time and bandwidth, if not, it's better to use them than not. But, um, if you do have a little extra time, we're going to go into a little bit of what to expect, uh, so that it feels a little less daunting. Okay. Um, and you can do it online, uh, mailing back the notice that you received, or you can hand deliver it. But I recommend you do it online because you can actually get in line for your formal protest that way too. So let's go to the next. Yeah, it's definitely good. So you have guys, she hasn't mentioned this yet, but there's an informal hearing and there's a formal hearing, right? So the yes. informal hearing. Let's go to that on the next one. Yeah. So let yeah. me go to the next one here on the informal hearing. Yeah. Well, so the process, you get in line, you file your intent to protest by May 15th. They will give you a notification of the date, time, and place of your formal hearing. Once you get that, you can request an informal hearing, or even before you get that, you can request an informal hearing, and that'll be with the appraisal district. Um, and, you know, that way you can try to resolve your protest. Usually what happens is, you know, you give your, your evidence facts to support that they have overvalued your, your uh, home or townhome, uh, and they they put it into context uh because at the end of the day they're using all of the data that they see but it's 
really uh, regional more so than it is specific. So there are a lot of things that you can do to help yourself in this case. And that'll be on the next slide. Okay, uh, Carmen, Gabby, before I go to the next slide, I think um, you guys can request what evidence they used. I think that's important. Um, a lot of my clients true. last year, mm -hmm. the evidence that the county used were, were comps that weren't even relevant comps. And right. especially here in Easton Park, um, it's, it, oh my gosh, it gives me a headache having to explain to the appraisers that <clears throat> y'all know how big this community is. There's a mixture of townhomes with a, with a yard. There's a mixture of the condominiums that we have here in, in Union Park. We have regular sized homes and other parks. Like it, it is a, it's a different size lots too, houses. right? And they try to compare other houses by similar square footage. And I'm like, uh-uh, I was like, we're, we're not going to play that game. We're let's, let's, Lord. let me tell you why. And I show them, um, I want, I want, I see their, their evidence, which is mm -hmm. the comps aren't relevant. So it's worth a fight if you can at least see what they're using to appraise your property at. And then you can fight it with now backing it up with your evidence, right? Yeah. We can help out if you guys need it, or you can hire a professional company uh, to help out with that. And hopefully they can save you. But it doesn't, I, I firmly believe that every one of us should be protesting our taxes every year, yeah. even if you have a homestead exemption. So I just wanted to say those two cents there, but uh, you want me to- No, move good to point. I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned that because it is super valuable to see what kind of evidence they're working with. Um, and whenever I think about, you know, how do we pro how do we prepare our own evidence? You know, we're going to go in and try to get the data for the most similar properties that sold as close to January 1st as possible. Um, and you want to have a few of those in hand in case they have some of those BS uh, comps that you're like, OK, that's on the other side of Easton Park or but I back to this street that's pretty busy or but I've had. XYZ mm -hmm. issues with, you know, I don't know a lot of people that have had foundation issues, but if you've had plumbing problems or roof problems, anything, all of that stuff will actually help you. Um, and so for, I, I imagine Liza and Araceli, y'all are getting kind of blown up with some of the requests from your clients too, where yes. this week I've just been sending out almost nonstop, like, here's what sold during that time that is comparable to your property. Here's what I would have on hand uh, so that you can say, hey, based on this, I think my value is this. And that way, um, you know, they're going to give you their evidence, but most likely if their evidence is eh, you want to have some of your own to back it up. So that's both of those things go in, hand in hand really, really well. Um, and then if the informal hearing doesn't doesn't pan out the way that you would like it to, if you feel like it's still not a fair value, um, then you go ahead to your formal hearing. And that'll be more of like a court process. Um, and you go to the appraisal review board uh, and they will hear from both the chief appraiser and from you as the taxpayer. Um, and that's kind of your that's your that's your last chance. You better have all your ducks in a row because this is going to be your last chance to get them to to lower that that valuation for well, the year. Let's, well, let's also talk about, you know, you just buy a house and you get your tax bill that says it's. I don't know, $700,000, but you bought that house for $600,000. Those closing documents are crucial because that is what you paid for it. How are you going yeah. to value my house more than what I paid for it? And why do you expect me to pay taxes on 700000 when I know I paid? Here's my documentation. Mm -hmm. I paid 600000 So that's really important, um, especially with a lot of uh, the new residents. The recent ones, yeah. The newer, newer yes. ones I bought. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are closed within a few months of, of January 1st, 2023, whether it was in 2022 or 2023, go ahead and get that, uh, the settlement statement. And I mean, really, it's just the fair first play page of your closing documents. You don't have to share everything, but that is absolutely a fantastic, uh, fantastic little negotiating thing that has worked for a lot of our neighbors. Um, on that too, you know, with our homestead, it, I, I hate to even say it, that I have clients that did not get their homestead exemption. So let this also be a reminder that if you've just closed on your house, file that homestead exemption as soon as possible because it is it is significant um, and it matters. But um, yeah, I, I hate it when I hear like, oh, I never filed my homestead no. Yeah, some people, they it, it kind of slips their mind because there's certain steps you have to do. You have to change your driver's license, right? Make sure yes, that that's a big one that gets a lot of people. Yeah, and, and people people put that in the back of their mind and eventually a year passes and they for, they've forgotten. So yeah, definitely get your, your homestead exemption in place. And also guys, please re re remember that Texas is a non-disclosure state. 
you don't have to disclose what you paid for the property unless it's something that's actually going to benefit you. So in this right. case, for protesting your taxes, if they're valuing your property at $100,000 more and you just purchased a property six months ago, that closing disclosure, the CD, right, the final closing mm -hmm. disclosure, that will actually help you. It'll, it'll work in your benefit to disclose what you actually paid for uh, because this could help lower your, your uh, valuation on your taxes. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. We have Jonathan asking a question here. I'm about to pop it up here. Interesting. We have had drainage issues on our new build home from Paysetter, and we're working on getting it fixed. Can this affect appraisal? Absolutely. Possibly. Absolutely. Yes. Anything that is possible at this point. You mm -hmm. wanna you wanna disclose that. You want documentation of that and disclose that to prepare your evidence packet, right? Just like how they gave you your evidence packet for what they use to uh, come up with your value. You wanna do the same for yourself. Here are all the issues, right? Here's here's the comps that I have to back up my evidence that are similar to my yeah. property, right? So yeah, want, if you can get that. pictures of it as well, and Liza, if you can go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. um, Jonathan, you're going to want pictures, everything that you can, uh, as far as evidence to back up the fact that y'all are having these problems. Um, and then the more you can emphasize that this is not a normal thing for everybody and et cetera, and you don't even know if Paysetter is going to fix it, well, you can be in the, in the process of trying to fix it yourself, but that's your own thing. And so if it were me, I would make it sound uh, as concerning as it can possibly be. For example, that can affect the health of your foundation. You know, like water pooling and whatnot, that's a serious thing. So you're going to want to emphasize that and make sure they know about all of those things. Um, so bad drainage, if you have a certain area where for some reason you can't get grass to grow. I know that might sound silly, but there are a lot of areas where some of the builders left concrete and then just put the sod over where they had like bits of concrete. If you have certain areas where you just cannot get grass to grow, that is something that's like visual and utilitarian wise. That's something worth bringing up. It might not feel huge, but you want to bring up everything you possibly can. If you've had issues with um, any kind of backups, uh, if you've had issues as far as what is it? Windows, if you are concerned about the seal, um, if you've had any issues with what's another one with the HVAC. Um, or what's, what's another good one? I know there's another one or any concerns with the roof. For example, I know some people have had some roof leaks and even if your builder was, did come in and fix it, you still had some water intrusion. So you want to go ahead and bring that kind of stuff up and bring all of the evidence that you have, um, to, to back that up. Right. So that goes into this next slide, uh, perfectly. The, the evidence you might want to prepare, one is a comparable market analysis that just shows the sold homes that are similar to yours in size, age, location, and type of construction. Um, and you want the solds closest to January 1st. Um, and you want to have those on hand just for your own self in case they try to compare, you know, your, uh, if they're trying to compare your pace setter with a Taylor Morrison and they're like, oh, but we just adjusted this down. It's like, no, but but there's a complete difference in the type of construction there. Like those crazy high ceilings, those add into the value. So you can't just adjust down based on square footage. You're gonna wanna have the things that are most similar to your property already on hand. Um, documentation regarding your home's condition. That goes back to what Jonathan asked as far as foundation problems, plumbing issues, anything that would adversely affect the market value should be documented. This also goes for location. So if it backs to a pretty busy street, um, something, and this is actually straight from the Travis County Appraisal District website. Um, so this is actually, you, you can print out a, a map and be like, this is one of the main roads. And so we have noise and it is not as desirable as something that's in the middle of, you know, one of the areas that you're not going to have a lot of traffic. Um, Every single thing matters. If you're close to construction, bring that up. If you are close to construction, you want to bring up the noise, the dust and the dirt. You're going to want to bring up the debris that they leave out in the streets. All of that counts because it does play into uh, what you'd be able to sell your house for. Um, and you're trying to get an accurate idea of what it would sell for on January 1st of the year. Um, and then, like Araceli said, the closing statement. 
if you can use that to your benefit, use it to your benefit. The only time you don't want to use it is if somehow they undervalued your property. And in that case, don't even protest, but that's very yeah. rare. So, yeah. So last year, on, I know you kept mentioning about January 1st. Last year, they did allow comps, I think, up until February 15th. Yes. So, so that what I've heard is that within three yeah. months. Mm -hmm. within three months. And that the same thing goes, if your closing was within three months of January 1st, make sure you take that closing statement. If it wasn't still take the closing statement and try, but it's more of a toss up based on what we saw last year. Would you guys agree? Oh, well, I'm not saying about the people that just bought, I'm talking about in general comps used mm -hmm. for this year. Oh, yes. It can go up to February. Well, last year, I know it was February 15th. So you might want to, if there is anything in there that is up until February 15th, just include it. It yes. might help you. And if, if the county says, no, we're not including those comps anymore, they did last year. So you just never know. Just come prepared, yeah. present all the evidence that you have that can help you. And yes. always hope for the best because I know it's been brutal. Last year was really tough for some people. Yeah. Um, but yeah. You want me to go to the next? Is there a next slide, Gabby, on this um, one? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so just a few things to keep in mind because these are common misconceptions. The appraisal district is responsible for setting the appraisal value, but they have nothing to do with the tax rate. This is a really common misconception. Yeah. So you yeah. don't want to bring up the tax rate. Uh, similarly, keep in mind, you're not going to these hearings to protest your tax rate or how much you're paying in taxes. You are only appealing the county's assessed value of your home. Make sure you, you keep that distinction in mind because it can, it can kind of cause them to lose a little bit of, of respect for your argument if they hear an argument for something that they're not able to control. If that makes sense. Yes. Um, you're going to want to be polite and courteous and friendly as much as you can uh, because they get tired of dealing with people all the time and they do have our wallets in, in their hands. <laughs> um, so always be polite. Bring an extra copy of supporting documentation um, if you're if you're going to do it in person or have it easily available to send via PDF or upload. Um, and then keep in mind that if you don't like the results of the informal one, they'll give you a chance to say, hey, OK, we've brought it down to this. Will you accept this? You can say yes, accept it. That gets locked in and you can throw out your formal hearing or you can say no and move on to your formal hearing. Um, and that that is an option that you have. So. What I, what I hope y'all will get out of this is that there is a lot that you already know. We, as, as people who live here, we know this neighborhood better than anybody who doesn't. So it's on us to educate them why data from certain areas needs to be used, why things are or are not comparable. Um, and I just, I really want to encourage y'all to, to dig into what you already know. You know your house. We have another question, Gabby, from Jonathan. Uh, who do you go before at the hearing? A single person, a panel of people, how formal, informal is the process? It, you actually have some options. You don't have to be there in person, but I'll let Gabby take that away. Yeah, no. So that is, it's a great question. Um, so the informal one is actually for you, you meet with the appraisal district um, with like the Travis County appraisal district. Um, and usually that's, from what I've seen, that's usually like one person. Uh, sometimes there's more. Would y'all say, have you guys had any experience with more than one person? I No, when I had my informal, it was a conference call with one person. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. A conference with one person. And, and I didn't have to go beyond that. Uh, okay. But okay. if you do appeal and you go beyond, I believe you can still do it virtual conference or in mm -hmm. person uh, with the ARB. Um, yes. Hang tight real quick. He has another question. Let me so pull the... So just to clarify, the appraisal district is who you meet with for the informal one. The appraisal review board is who you meet with for the formal one. Formal hearing, correct. Yes, for the formal hearing. Um, if you move Here's on to the formal question. hearing, yeah. can the formal hearing kick out the informal hearing's price adjustment? Uh, I, I have heard of that happening, yes, to where it, it's not super common, but yeah, it does it's, it's unlikely for them to kick it out. But if you truly feel stronger that they really appraise your property extremely high based on all the evidence you have, it's worth it to appeal it and go to the formal hearing. Um, I think worst case scenario for a lot of folks is they stick to what they had originally had for the informal hearing. Um, if you have no luck there for the formal, but it's still worth a shot if you truly feel strong about 
what your property value is at and based on yeah. the evidence that you have. It's really hard to tell with everybody what what their values came in at, what evidence you have, what evidence they had, right? Comparing it against their evidence. So you before you do any of the uh, formal hearings, you want to compare what they had versus what you have uh, in the side with all the conditions uh, of the property that's going on, yes. the issues that you may be having. So and another good thing time. to remember is that the, the representative from the appraisal district in the informal hearing, that's going to be a variety of different people working with mm -hmm. all different people. Um, so we've heard some people get super lucky and some don't. Uh, if you think you're overvalued, continue to the formal hearing. It's a, it's a bit more standardized. Um, so that, that might give you peace of mind, might not. Um, but with that one, you know, you'll have Usually, what have you guys seen? Because I know I know what I've seen, but it's a uh, what is it? You have the the chief appraiser there to back up why they think their evidence is valid, mm -hmm. and you can present your stuff on why you do not feel it is valid, um, and all of that goes to the appraisal review board. Besides the informal hearing, yes, it no, would go for the hearing. I mean, for the formal hearing, yeah, to the appraisal right? review board, correct. Which um, you have other options for it doesn't have to be in person, but you have other options uh, to present yes. that evidence via conference or virtual as well. So was it just mine or did you guys also for the appraisal review board, was it one person on their behalf and then the chief appraiser or did y'all have multiple? I, I never had to go past oh, okay. the informal. Yeah. I, normally at the informal, it, uh, you know, it, it just depends what evidence they had and what evidence you have. And I know this is going to be on a case by case basis, yeah. but on my end, from my experience with the house that I have, um, I didn't have to appeal it anymore. I usually had it settled at the informal hearing. That's um, awesome. Yeah. So, but who knows? This year, this year I may have to. I don't know because they're they're still coming up. I'm like, man, I can't even sell my house for that much. But all right. right. <laughs> I've heard so many people say that they're like, if I could get from my house, what Travis County is saying I can get from my house. Lord, yeah, it's oh, yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh, come on. I, I know you guys are feeling that way. I'm like, hmm. All right, time to put my, you know, get, gather my evidence. And I'm sure a lot of neighbors are feeling that too. So we got to mm -hmm. help each other out and work together in hopes that maybe we can get these uh, values down. Yes. Oh, that's another good point. I didn't actually put that in here. But um, so you can approach it from two different sides. One is the market value where you kind of bring your own evidence. Another way is if you know the adjusted appraised value or the adjusted assessed value for some of your neighbors after they've won their protest, you can use that as your data as well. Yes. To have them bring down yours. Um, so yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up. That is, that's the awesome thing about the community that we live in. We all share, hey, this is what happened with me, with my formal mm -hmm. hearing. Get that. Connect with that person. I'm positive, 100% positive that neighbor is not going to keep that from you. They're going to want to help you. Like you just reach out to that neighbor. Hey, can you, what did you use to provide this? If we work together now, this is, if you don't want to use a professional company, right? Like five stone to protest your taxes and we can work, um, as a neighborhood together and provide each other information, depending on what section of Easton park you live at, because I know every, as you know, certain parts are a bit different yeah. than the other parts, but, um, I but know yeah. for Easton park, we had, we had like a little spreadsheet going, because some of us got really lucky and some of us did not. Yeah. Uh, and so that might be another good thing to kind of just touch in with the people in your neighborhood and say, hey, do we want to go ahead and keep this? You know, I think for us, we used a, a Google form, like a, a just an open Google form that was editable. Um, and it was a great way to keep adding evidence that we could use at our own formal hearings to back up what we were saying. Because that way you're saying, yes, I have this from the market activity and I also have this that you guys already said earlier this month or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that, that is a, we can work together and it helps everyone. The more we bring all of our property values down, the less assessed value we're going to get taxed on. Mm -hmm. so that helps everyone. Oh, and I think on the next slide, I think you might've discussed this. I was just a little, little bit slow on clicking next. So <laughs> go ahead, Gabby. I don't know if the, if that was something, if there's anything else on this slide that you wanted to discuss. Oh, no, Good? that's it. Yeah. So just to, for the sake of keeping it uh, under an hour, I will go ahead and move past these slides and go to the market stats for general market stats. So um, I have here April stats. And wh when I put April, I mean April closed, right? So all the homes that have closed in April are going to be reflected under the closed section for both of these um, uh, stats that I have here. Anything that's currently active or pending, that that is going to be uh 
open ended, I guess, if you want to say it's going to be current to this to the to May. Uh, but if you see here, we have seen a bit of a reduction on uh, the days on market for resale and new. So on the left hand side slide, you will see that we had an average of three hundred and fifty three thousand eight hundred ninety five ninety one K um, with new end uh, resale properties. Now, what's interesting here, if you look on the closed, um, it says average 46 days on the market and 13 of those properties, only 20% only were brand new construction. Uh, the other 80% was resell. So as you can see on the resale side, we're seeing 45, 46 days on the market. For the active pending, um, we're seeing 80% new builds, 20% resell. So a lot of these numbers are a bit skewed because it, it's showing more days on market, 115 days or 99 days before it went under contract. You're going to see more days on market there just because we do have more of the new builds than we do resell. Uh, but we're still relatively seeing the same numbers as we did last month, right? There Can I add another thing? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, also, keep in mind that with the, with the new builds, anytime they have something that falls through, but it's like a cream puff where it's just something where it's just like, oh, that's such a nice property. A lot of times that doesn't make it to the market. Um, and my, I've got some buyers that went under contract literally last week on one of those and it doesn't end up on the MLS. So we don't have those. those stats. Yeah. We don't we, have. Yeah. I remember Adesely mentioned a long time ago, I think on one of our very first live streams that there's a lot of new construction uh, stats that are not even reflected in MLS. Mm -hmm. So just know that this is not all the data and all the information, but certainly it's the information available on MLS that I could pull just for Easton Park. Right. Um, I have yes. one more question or not uh, it's more of a, I guess, a thought or a comment on um, on the using five stone. Um, so pretty much what, what I see here is that it would be fantastic if we all had if we had like a neighborhood Google form or Excel sheet of all the comps, right, that we could share and we could all use, uh, depending on what type of house we have. So yeah, Jonathan, we can certainly uh, either add to that or put that together for the neighborhood. What yeah, do you I think we can do that. Maybe we can have one master one and have different sheets. Yeah, for sure. Um, and it might have to be a little bit different because, and I'll tell you why, Jonathan, if you're still online, um, if you see here these drastic price ranges, it's because it's a combination of condominiums, townhomes, and then regular single family homes. Mm -hmm. um, that's why there's a big difference because we're going from two bedrooms all the way up to maybe four or five bedrooms for these houses. So it's all together, all of this, the stats condensed in this summary here. Um, but we could certainly put something together where it kind of separates the townhomes and the condominiums and the regular uh, single family homes, uh, depending on square footage. And even that, on regular single family homes, you have some that are between 14 to 1600 in square footage, similar mm -hmm. to townhomes, but they're not. They're they're either in Bryant Park uh, or Knob Hill, right? Yeah. So yeah. I just saw yeah. one in Skyline, which I did not even know was a thing. It was it's a two two in Skyline. In Skyline, I saw that too. Yeah, and, that and weird. It, yeah, it was the craziest thing because I was like, how did this not? pop up on my radar before. Yeah. And um, I, I think it, what I really think and what I told my client is because when you're thinking about moving to Skyline, you're not thinking two bedrooms, two no. baths. Like you are very, yeah. you know, two bedrooms, two baths or UPE, UP West. Um, so, I mean, we closed on it and it's the cutest thing because it's not two story and yeah. it was for my client, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's a good point. Like there's, there's just so many, so many different, different. yeah yeah There's so much data available to it so the i know i mentioned it earlier but i also want to emphasize y'all can use that property search feature on the tcad website to look up your neighbors so if you have a neighbor and you're like that would be a really good comp for me you can just put in their address and it'll show you what it was what it was assessed by the county at so you can see if that's beneficial to you to use you know so if you're having trouble getting a hold of somebody but you know they would be a great comp and you're like yeah. Go ahead yeah. and do that. The power is in your hands. This is all public information. Yes, I like that. Public information, if you want to do it, right? And if, and yes. Jonathan, if this all seems very overwhelming, like it probably is, right? With all the stuff we're discussing, it might be worth getting a professional company to do it. But yeah. um, if you take it step by step, it's actually really a matter of gathering your data, comparing it to their data and presenting it, right? right. Um, to lower your your property values. It seems like it, there's a lot of components, but it really is. And it's just really gathering data and presenting it in a way that really helps you out. 
Um, but sorry, I went off on a tangent. Um, for anybody that is curious to know on leases, right, the lease stats. So uh, last month in April, we had three properties at least in Easton Park between 2750 and 3300. Again, just as a reminder, this does not include off market properties. This is all included, whatever is an MLS. Mm -hmm. um, and then as of now, we have 15 active properties for, for lease between 2400 and 3700. And we have seven properties that are in the pending status uh, that are between 2545 and 3500. In case anybody's curious, right, uh, to know about the lease part, but these are averaging about 24 days on the market before before it goes pending. So um, hopefully that helps our neighbors out in case they're wanting to lease. Like like with Nancy, right? She had a situation come up. She didn't want to let go of her property. She leased her property moved to Georgia, moved back to Easton Park two years, right? Was it a year or two years later? So guys, if you don't want to let go of your house and you have a life-changing event coming up, this is valuable information for you. you yeah. Have yeah. An idea you want to be Park. Yeah. yeah, exactly. If you don't, don't want to, you know, leave Easton Park, you still want to have some sort of a, a property here, but you maybe leasing might make sense to you. If it makes sense, then here's the stats. Mm -hmm. uh, if you need more in-depth stats, contact one of us to mm -hmm. give you information on what it would, what your, your property would actually lease for. And alternatively also it, on the, on the sale price, if you're curious to know what your property could sell for, right. Then we could certainly help you with that and define it more rather than it being this big range here. Uh, but I think cool. we Can are I one more thing? just yes. last one. I know we're right at the time. Uh, <laughs> this does not include the ADUs. So we yes. do have a lot of people who are renting those out. I've seen those go for between a thousand to twelve hundred. Yes, um, and those don't tend to show up on the MLS, but they are still being rented out. They can still be used for you. Absolutely. Uh, and I, you know what? I think that's fantastic. If you have an ADU and you're renting that sucker for twelve hundred dollars a month, that is good. That's good, <laughs> that right? Is good. So yes, I, for you guys, I always say this in the in our prior lives. I'm jealous because. I should have gotten that that uh, either the paysetter home when it was there with the casita or the Newmark homes. Man, with the casitas, I was like, damn, that would that would have been <laughs> a well, good one. Inside is twenty twenty. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So, anyways, um, guys, I thank you so much for uh, joining our live stream. Again, we go live uh, every second Thursday of the month, once a month for our live streams. We always present stats and what's going on in the neighborhood. Uh, what events are coming up and we do highlight a resident if you would like to be highlighted if you have a business and you want to be highlighted on our live stream please reach out to us and we will get everything set up for you but other than that i think we're gonna call it we're gonna end it now i think we did good on our live stream so uh if you have any questions just ask us don't be shy and uh and i'll oh, post it. see john the slides That's sweet on the you neighborhood did. Oh, thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> Maybe we'll run into each other, Jonathan, because we I do plan on going to the uh, Siniso and get some coffee tomorrow. So we might run into you. So, <laughs> uh, but anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining. And I am about to end this live stream in three, two, one, and. Uh,